Welcome, viewers, to General Archibald's boot camp of Fire Emblem event hacking. This is General Archibald here with a very short video episode on event IDs. Now, I've gone over this before, and hopefully, if you're at episode 12 by now, you know what a freaking event ID is. If you don't, please turn off the YouTube video now. Alright, if you're still on the YouTube channel, then we're going to go over event IDs one more time. This is our event ID. First parameter for turn events, if you'll recall, you usually use 0x00, unless it's an event with a condition in it that keeps repeating itself that you only want to happen once. So then you'd use a real event ID other than 0. Now, I start my event IDs at 5, like I said before. Then you go up 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, 10, 11, 12, etc., etc. Now, alright, so you should know where to put the event ID. There's something I'd like to cover. That is permanent event IDs. Now, these... If you activate an event ID, O66 or above, the game will remember that that event ID was activated until the game is complete. So, you can utilize this, and there are a ton of permanent event IDs usable in the game. Anything below 66, and you're not going to use 65 because that's already taken by the game for Lord Death, but 64 and below will be forgotten when you start the next chapter. 66 and above will always be remembered. So you can use that for interlinking chapter events. Like if you do something in one chapter, then in the next chapter you can unlock something else. Special or... You can use it like I've used it in Olivian Nights. Um, after you complete a tale... A permanent event ID is activated that unlocks the next tail and the tail select feature. So you can you can use it for all sorts of creative ways. Like if you complete a guidance chapter, you can activate a permanent event ID. And then in the next chapter, something can occur that happens only if you went to that guidance, aka if event if permanent event ID 0x66, for instance, was triggered. So that's what I wanted to cover in this video because I, for, I totally forgot about permanent event IDs as I was covering event IDs before. And just remember that event IDs with the same ID, that basically means that if... Okay, so event IDs, if they're triggered, means that events with that ID cannot be triggered again. Now, a couple codes I'd like to go over because I'm not sure if I did go over them are... Enut and enough. Now the only parameter for this is an event ID. So, hold on, let me check my uh, event assembly language file because I always get confused on those. Enough. Okay, so enut makes it so the event ID was triggered. So at the end of chapter 2x, let's say we trigger event ID 66, that is enot 0x66 and then if we want to make it so an event is not triggered we use enough. So let's say we want event 0x05 to happen again after another event has occurred that will make it so that we can trigger that ID again. Now if you can use event IDs to do all sorts of creative things like um I believe I showed you this before but um go to my YouTube account my videos and let's see concept for chapter goal rebuilding villages now let's take a look at those events and just really quickly, because I've pretty much covered what needs to be covered. So, Tail 1X events. And
and there's a lot of conditions based on events. But um, check it out. Where is it? Master Tournament will basically. So what happens when you visit a village before the supplies are delivered with Merlinus? If you visit with Merlinus and he delivers supplies, it triggers that event ID. That's odd. That should be the other way around. So it triggers that event ID. Wait, no, never mind. Yeah, it triggers event ID 0x0f for village number 3. Now, in the master turn event, the master turn event happens each turn, starting turn 2, and it will just check to see if these conditions are met. So, check it out. Um, third village rebuilding. If event 0x25 is triggered, then... That's odd. Oh yeah, enough 0x25. So if that event is triggered... See, I always get mixed up on my enoughs and my enuts, but... Oh well. Then... Oh, and only then will it read this, which is the reconstruction command. So, you can do a lot of inventive things by just abusing event IDs. Like, you could have a game where events are entirely dependent on the triggering events in other chapters. So, I mean, really, it just be creative. And I, I, I'm eager to see what people can come up with with this because I've done my fair share of event ID abuse in some ways so it's just exciting it opens a lot of doors when you understand just how just like knocking down dominoes and like this occurs after this combining conditions with event IDs it just it's um yeah I, it opens a lot of doors so I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you learned something Good day and good luck to you all.